Hello, this is Bashar. In this tutorial, we are going to see the option to change the response model in Spring Boot. In my previous tutorials, we have seen how we can create response body with the JSON view and projection. Now we are going to create the response body with DTO data transfer objects. Again, we are going to use the tutorial codes, this one, Spring Response Model, and so far we have these branches. This was the JSON view tutorial and this was the projection tutorial. Again, in this one, we are going to use same repository and we will build the DTO on top of the projection branch. So let's copy this URL and I'm running git clone and opening this folder in Visual Studio Code. And let's switch to the branch projection. Again, if you go over the project structure in the POMXML, we are running the Spring version 2.3.4. Spring Boot has newer version 2.4, but it has no difference with the things we are going to do in this tutorial. And I'm using the Java version 11. We have the data JPA. We have the web dependency. We have H2 embedded database and we have the dev tools and the Lombok. And if we check the project packages, we have the user package and the article package. We were returning the user projection in this get mapping and the user projection was basically an interface and we were returning these fields and the user object has a relationship with the articles and we were also having a nested projection like the user user projection was containing the article projection or we can just change the data like this one we can get the article size and add to the user projection. And if we run the application, and testing it with Postman, so running get users, and here it is returning back this list, having the objects, which are having the full name, user one, last name, email, and article count, and this was basically the expression we write here in the user projection. So the user object does not have the full name, but the username and last name. And we were merging both of those variables here in this value expression. And we can also run the methods of the, the object, like the, this string has two uppercase, and we can just convert the string to uppercase or like this one, the articles is basically a list and we can run its size method. So this is how the projection is working. But the downside of the projection is we have to add our custom methods to our user repository. But user repository, which is extending this JPA repository, basically contains all the common necessary functionalities like finding all, paging, or finding specific user based on its primary key, the ID, and so on. But if you want to go with the projection, then we have to add our custom queries like this one. So instead of projection, now we are going to do the same thing with DTO. So here, adding a user DTO here. Again, in this one, we can have the fields like, let's go with the same implementation, this one. We will have the full name, email, and article count. And we have private string full name, private string email, and integer of article count. And again, we can use the long box data notation for getters and setters for these fields. And 
we are going to generate this user DTO based on the user object. We will do that in a bit, but first let's replace our implementation right here. In user service, we were calling this get all users in the user repository, which was basically listing all the users in the user table. We no longer need this one. We will just remove it, remove it. Instead of that one, we are going to just return the, let's say user object. We will change it to user DTO in a bit. And we can get the list of users from the user repository by running find all. This one is returning list of users. And in the user controller, we are going to return back user DTO. So this get users is returning back as the list of users. So we need to convert these users to the user DTO. And we can do that by, we can have, we have multiple options. Either we go with the regular looping with the for loop and change one, one by one, or we can go with the stream API so we can run stream of this list and we can map each of the user this is the user instance to new user DTO so user DTO it's a user DTO we create a new instance and let's set the values one by one so user DTO set full name is user get username plus space plus user get last name and for user DTO set email is user get email and for user DTO set article count is user get articles size and return this user DTO. Then we can just collect each of these items in a list collectors to list. So we are looping in this list of users. We are mapping each user object. This is user object to user DTO object and we are collecting them in a list and returning back. So let's save all these changes. And our application is restarted. Now going back to Postman, running this send and here we are receiving the response we are looking for. Instead of doing that object creation part like this here, we can do the implementation inside this user DTO. So we can have a user DTO constructor right here and it would take the user object and we can just copy and paste this part. So changing this user DTO to this because this uh, class has this set full name, set email and set article methods. So we are taking the user as constructor parameter and setting our values right here. And here, instead of creating user detail like this, we can just pass the user or we can just return new user detail like this, or we can use constructor reference since this user DTO only has one constructor which is taking this user object. We can directly say like this user DTO colon colon new. So this is going to be passing the user objects to this user DTO's constructor and in the end it's going to be creating the user DTO and we will be, and we are adding that user DTO to this collection. So we can save this one and see the result again. So 
sending request here we are receiving the users so the advantage is basically we no longer need to add custom methods right here the user repository has the functions of this find all or we can just list them like this the find all count the the other find functions so we are using the, these functionalities and we don't need to uh, the, do any changes in the user repository to make our application work with the projection. And when we want to go with the nested behavior, like instead of this user object to have the count, but the list of article DTO. So let's, let's do that. Let's have article DTO right here. So in article projection, we basically have the title and content. And let's do the same thing, just copying and pasting these uh, fields from article object to article DTO and adding the data annotation. And just like we did in the user DTO, I'm going to add a constructor article DTO having the article object we will do the same article DTO creation right here. And here, let's just call this set title from the article, article get title. And this set content, article get content. So the article DTO is ready. And in user DTO, we can just change this part instead of just the article count, we can just return the list of article DTO and we can just name it as articles. And let's initialize with an empty array. So we can, let's organize imports. So here, instead of setting article count, we can just set the articles uh, based on, let's do, let's do this way first. Uh, we can just get the user get articles. Again, we can stream in the, that one. And we can map each of these articles to article DTO. Then we can collect each article DTO to to list and let's assign this as a variable right here let's say let's list of article DTO uh, article DTOs and let's set articles as this article DTOs so let's save these changes and try it once again So sending the request and here we are seeing the user object having the articles and the articles are having the title and the content. So we no longer need the projection and we can just remove that one. So removing the article projection, removing the user projection. And let's do one more thing. In one of my previous tutorial, I was showing the pagination and we can also do the same thing for the pagination. So we were mapping the list of users to user DTO, but let's change this part. We will get the page parameters in the request and we can get it by the pageable like this. If you're not familiar with the pagination, you can just check my tutorial about it. And let's pass this pageable to get users pageable. And instead of list, we are going to return back the page object. And let's change our implementation right here. We are going to return back the page and we will take the pageable as parameter pageable. And here we are going to call find all with with this one, having the pageable 
parameter. So we will pass the pageable. So with this way, instead of list of users, we are going to receive page of users. And now we have, this is returning page of users. So what we will do is basically just commenting this part out and here this get users is returning page user and it has this map function and we will just use that one user dto new and just removing the unnecessary lines so saving all these changes and trying once again with postman and here we are receiving the page object this is the object page object having this content array and here it is showing the page information there are total two pages and each page has 20 items and in this content array we have 20 users and we can just send our request like this we can get the page let's say page one and each page would have size of let's say three so this is the page one the index is starting from the zero so this is the next page if we want to go to the first page we will set it to page zero so we have the user one user two user three and that's it so with the dto it is easier to manage the response model uh, compared to the uh, projection or the JSON view. When the object has the nested entries and these nested entries might have their childs, so the JSON view implementation can become troublesome and it might be hard to de debug or figure out which one is leading uh, some kind of failures. So if your object models the relationship of your models gets complicated, then it is the best way to use the DTO as a response modeling. And when compared with the projection, again, we don't need to create new repository methods and we can go with the, the JPA repository functions for the user objects, which are already covering most of the use cases. And this is all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorials.